I'm in Ireland where it's cold, it's green, the people here are very friendly, and they know how to drink. Guinness, whiskey, even Irish coffee has alcohol in it. I, I haven't drank since last night, and I, I think I'm still drunk. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm drunk. <laughs> Every night, in every city around the world, it happens. People pour into local watering holes to, well, drink. It's my mission, that's me, to traverse the globe getting to know these different people and their drinking customs. Bellying up to the bar, and with any luck, making some new friends. <laughs> Warning, if you go to Ireland, you will drink Guinness. And if you do, beware of the Guinness mustache. Wow, that's good Guinness. You'll see more of that later, but first. Ireland, where it's not only customary, it's practically your patriotic duty to consume Guinness beer and Irish whiskey. Give us two large Jamesons as well, will you? Oh, good heavens. But let's be honest, I can get those drinks in the States and just about anywhere else in the world, for that matter. But I'm in Jamaica, I don't think I'm gonna drink Guinness. Why do you guys drink so much Guinness? Slow chair. Slow chair. There's just something different about drinking them here. In Ireland, the way they're meant to be consumed. Oh, very good. Cheers. What's the perfect glass for drinking Irish whiskey? I've cut the cheese many times, but never cut glass. <laughs> What's the perfect pour when it comes to Guinness? I, uh, well, just a bit more. Did I do that wrong? Yeah. yeah. And my favorite, Things you need to know how to say when drinking here. Sloucha. All right. Sloucha? Prepare to be indoctrinated into one of the world's most renowned drinking cultures. The whiskey taking effect. When we go three sheets in Ireland. <laughs> I begin my Irish drinking bonanza in the town of Galway, where I'm greeted by a guy I'm calling Galway Joe. This tower here. That's the edge of the old city. Oh, wow. He's a and member of the town council. There's always something happening here. You get a very big tourist population here in the summer. Mm -hmm. And you guys, people singing. Oh, yeah. Serenading, it's wonderful. That's, <laughs> they are, yeah. Those wonderful. guys have been practicing. Wonderful. They just, all they do is sing. That's a big tradition in Ireland. Busking, we call that busking. Yeah. And he's not, he's not sober though, Joe, is he? Oh, he's sober, but he's not very he's, good. <laughs> If he was drunk, he'd probably be better. Oh, all right. <laughs> I think if I was drunk, he'd be better. But it's a big tradition to have festivals here in some of the, lot of the cities in Ireland for busking on the street. Another big tradition in Ireland is Guinness beer. And I'm eager to learn more about it. Which brings us to Freenies? Freenies. Freenies. Where's the entrance? Right here? Just right here. Thank you. Should we? <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> Jeez, we're not that we'll patient take, usually we'll, to get we'll into the pub. We'll take a new entrance. OK. <laughs> We usually have a race to get in. All right. This is Freenies now. This is one of the, the great old pubs of Galway. All right. You got to give these people some Guinness. Yeah, of course. Enjoy. Right. Thank you. And now we have to let it sit let there it for a second. Because man, you're learning fast. I'm learning. I'm impatient. <laughs> So why do you have to wait for a Guinness? There's actually a scientific explanation for it, which calls for a three sheets Guinness documentary. Whether in the can, in the bottle, or in the keg, most beers are pressurized with CO2, which is absorbed into the liquid upon pressurization. When the pressure is released, the CO2 is released from the liquid causing fizziness. However, Guinness is pressurized with a mix of only 25% CO2 and 75% nitrogen. Nitrogen is not as easily absorbed into the liquid as CO2. Therefore, when the pressure is released from the nitrogen pressurized Guinness, there is less fizziness, causing a much creamier head that is slower to settle. All right, enough beer chemistry. Time to see how to pour one of these things, which takes time. Almost two minutes from first pull to first sip. Let's start the clock. It's a two-stage process. First, stage one. 
And then usually you kind of have chit chat, right? Like oh, of course, talk to yeah. people in the bar, say, how, how you guys doing? Maybe like... <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then... <laughs> you know... <laughs> That's good. That, is yeah. that good? It's good. I didn't mess it up? No, you're fine. There's you want one too? Sure, let me help you out. Sure, hold on one second. <laughs> Come here often, do you? That's Great. See. Perfect. Great, fantastic. Oh, hi, folks at home. For myself, a nice little Guinness here. I uh, well, just a bit more. Did light. I do that wrong? Yeah. Yeah. Just... There you go. How's that? That's fine. And it's uh, important too not to have any, um, as they call them, frog's eyes on the top. Whoa. <laughs> like those. Yes. <laughs> Once the first pour is done, you have to wait for it to settle, or as they say, cook, before topping it off. And then I just... Back it. What? So what you want to do? Okay, up. okay. No. Nope. What? what? Back it. Back. Oh, back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And when in Ireland, never be stingy when serving <laughs> Guinness. Keep going. I didn't oh, know more? Okay. <laughs> All right, another bit. <laughs> another bit. What, more? Oh, yeah. The man is paid for it. you got to fit that's it to it, the top. That's it, that's it. Perfect. Oh, good heavens. According to the Guinness Brewing Company, a Guinness is ready for consumption 119.5 seconds after the first pour. Just under two minutes. It's worth Andrew, the wait. Come on, Joe, come on. And now I'm ready for my very first Guinness in Ireland. Slow check. What do you, what? Slow check is the Irish for cheers. Slow check. Slow check. Spell it. S-L-I-I-N-T. Slow cha. Slow cha. It means you're a good help. Thank you. Two, two. Slow. <laughs> okay, time for fun with Irish phonics. Repeat after me. Slow cha. <laughs> Congratulations. You're learning fast. Now remember that, because the toasts only get more complicated from here. <laughs> Our super dark, <laughs> nitrogen pressurized, slow pours beers totally hit the spot. That's good Guinness. In fact, I could go for another. And I'm not worried about the calories. Because even though a lot of people think this is a meal in the glass, as far as beers go, it's quite low in calories. In fact, a 20 ounce Imperial pint of Guinness contains 198 fat free calories. That's fewer calories than most popular American beers. Yeah, it's lunch. Thank you. Yeah, you're supposed to click. Oh. Cheers. Good. Okay, on to the next bar, a place Joe is closely tied to. We lived over the shop when I was born. No way. That's amazing. See this? This this goes back to 1649. Wow. It's called the King's Head Pub. Some of my ancestors lived here. Wow. It was called the Old Malt. Lived where? Here? They lived in this pub. Yeah, they grew oh. up here. Wow. Um, but wait, but it wasn't over 100 years old. But it wasn't a pub at the time. Well, well, yeah, they would have lived over the pub. Okay. That's a quite a common thing in Ireland. So they lived up. They would lived upstairs. Oh, yeah. The family would live overhead. Something else that's common in Ireland: the famous black and tan, or is it? Now I don't know about you, but as an American, I reckon a black and tan ought to have a lighter lager top beer on the bottom, with a little Guinness poured slowly over the back of a spoon, leaving a little Guinness on the top. And maybe a, a, a cute little shamrock or something for good luck. In Ireland, on the other hand, a black and tan varies from place to place. Not only in appearance, but also in name. Black and tans, yeah, we call them special. A pint of special. A pint of special. Yeah. Here you feel a pint almost all the way to the top with Smithix Irish Ale. Yes, it looks like Smithwick's, but it's actually pronounced Smithix. And then what do you do for if you if you make it a special? You just put a small bit of Guinness. Oh really? Yeah. It's nothing spectacular. Oh, it's I see. It's yeah. just and you give it a few seconds to settle. And All right. So, so you just you give it a creamy top rather than your bubbly lager yeah. top. So the next time you're drinking in Ireland, don't go thinking you know what a black and tan is just because you drank a bunch of them back home on St. Patty's Day. Galway oh, Joe and I good. toss back our fair share of specials before Small closing shit. time. <laughs> but this is just the beginning of my yeah, Irish drinking yeah, excursion. Yeah, yeah. I got big plans for tomorrow. <laughs> First day in Galway, huh? Yeah. Can't last the pace. Joe, I had fun. <laughs> Thanks, man. Good, good. Mm -hmm. Coming up, see if I can talk this guy into letting me design my own customized well, Irish whiskey it. drinking glass. I think a third grader could do better than me. Then I go native in a rural bar where English is the second language. Seal father, it's Boston native. 
Will they warm up to a yank with a thirst for new drinking buddies? I have no idea what I'm saying. I was going to drink that. Oh, that'll, de that'll definitely make it to the... Day two, Galway, Ireland. Sure. It's an Irish frog of some Sorry. sort. Galway is famous for the making of world-class crystal. Why would I, Zane Lamprey, host of the world's coolest drinking show, care about crystal? Because a good drinking glass is important. In fact, a good Irish whiskey drinking glass, when in Ireland, is even more important. So I'm off to Galway Crystal to get me my very own customized whiskey drinking glass. Before I can get my glass, I need to explain the nature of this show to my drinking guide, Ema. The, you know this show is called Three Sheets? To the Wind? Yeah, and do you know what that means? Yeah, I kind of, I think, I think it's very good that they got you to present it though, because you kind of... I don't, know if, you, I don't you, know if you know what it means. Three sheets to yeah, the wind. Yeah, yeah. But do you know where it comes from? It means you're a bit kind of... No. no. <laughs> uh, she might not quite get the concept of the show, but she knows exactly the type of drinking glass I need. Deal with double old fashioned. Double old fashioned. Yeah, so that you can get double the amount into the one glass. It's to drink more. Yes. Double O is for an old fashioned. That's the yes. drink that you put in there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because the old fashioned kind of shots, if you like, were yeah. way bigger. Now they have the measure to a T, and it's like. Well. Drinking water. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going for a double old fashioned. Now Ema takes me back to the cutting area. Am I going to cut some crystal? Uh, if you're able. <laughs> I'll show her. Time to suit up for my crash course in crystal cutting with Michael. He's been working here for about 30 years. And you kind of oh, I see. Okay. I think a third grader could do better than me. Look at that. This is yours. Yeah. And this is mine. Yeah. I suck. That's so bad. Okay. Oh Cutting God. crystals not something you learn in a day. But I do have a cool idea for a glass. See, that's pretty good. You're impressed. I am impressed, Jeff. Say in is your name, is yeah. it? Yeah. Luckily, Mike cuts it for me. You, if you want to put any extra lines to make it to make it cool, sexy. Yeah. Make it sexy. No. Oh. Look at that. Huh? Yeah. Look at that. So there you have it. My very own Zane double old fashioned glass. All right, I'm ready to drink but not on an empty stomach. So I journeyed to the town of Kilcogan to a place called Morns of the Weir. A weir is a section of river that has been dammed to raise the water level, making it navigable by boats. But who cares about that? I'm hungry. And if you think Irish food is all about corned beef, cabbage, and potatoes, think again. This place serves up fresh seafood taken from local waters. The platters are robust and delicious. But before diving into the food, I find this guy at the bar. He's a doctor with a truly Irish perspective when it comes to your health. So I'm, so I'm sitting here with a doctor who, uh, who prescribes Guinness. Absolutely. Right? Okay. Absolutely. And you've been drinking it for, since you were three? For too long. Okay. Long, long before my parents knew about it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's toast it, huh? Mm -hmm. Cheers. Or we would say, we would say what? Slauncher. 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 Slauncher was sale for this boss near. Wait, what did you just say? And this calls for a three sheets instant replay. Slauncher was sale for this boss near. Okay, translation time. Good health. Yeah. Long life. Yeah. And may I die in Ireland. Okay, you want to teach it to me? <laughs> Slauncher was. I have to admit, ancient Celtic languages okay, are not my forte. Sit, slonche, Hold well on, have another one of those, for Thank God's you. sake. Every time I mess it up, I get it. The more you have to let me say it, I'll be right to finish it. Well, slonche wa selfada es bossenere. Yeah, yeah. Good? Fantastic. OK, people, repeat after me. Slancho wa sail fada as boss and Aaron. <laughs> Congratulations, you're learning fast. Okay, enough learning. Time for more Guinness. This time with Vincent, head chef and world class oyster shucker. Right. He takes me into the kitchen for a crack at the local shellfish. So, uh, All right. Here are the famous Cambridge oysters. Okay. Average oyster. It has to be three inches across. Oh, okay. Serve, yeah. You push the blade in with your fingers. Okay. And up. Keep it up. 
the, the oyster. Let me see the scars. Do you have any scars? I don't have a few scars. Well, the knife went in there and came out the other side. Oh. A few scars. My turn. There's the knife. Get a nice one for you now. Hold on. There you go. So get your get it in the palm okay. of your hand. You have, you have a small enough hand, have you? Well, I got lady hands. Yeah. Is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And right here? Yeah, you've got to push it in, yeah? Push it in with your fingers. Okay, let me get it's a good your group. fingers, yeah? It hurts right there. It, well, Straight in. This is where I get hurt. No, you won't get hurt. I'm sure you're well assured. Oh, there you go. Done. That's a perfectly open oyster. I lost a thumb, but I got an oyster out of the day. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, help me, help me. Nice. Oh, my god. That is, I'm, honestly, that is better than, than um, oysters in the States. Good. More oysters. More Guinness, and all is good. I've literally had what the doctor ordered. I've experienced the ultimate Irish seafood. I've shucked with the master. It's what your fingers here. I'm trying yeah. so hard. But I need more. Something more old school, more rural, not so touristy. So I travel even further off the beaten path to the town of Spittle. A place that is exactly what I'm looking for. It's called Ty Hughes. No tourists. No shenanigans, authentic Irish drinking. Down to the people speaking in Irish. I've been warned that in these rural Irish pubs, outsiders aren't so welcome. But as soon as I walk in, the people here prove that theory wrong. Everyone is friendly and happy to talk to me, even in my language. I realized when I was about four that there were two languages, although I understood English, I didn't see it as a different language. Okay. I just couldn't speak it. Right. What used to happen is we'd arrive at school in the playground and be mostly Irish, but what happened then is there'd be two or three people back from America or like the parents would come home from America, from England, and yeah. all that kind of thing. And they, they wouldn't have Irish. So the only choice then would be to speak English to them. So everybody would change to English when they'd be around. So the, so the, so the school that we taught, that we, we hear, still would be taught uh, Irish, everything, every study taught in Irish. Yeah, we used to get extra points for doing your subjects in Irish. Now I try to earn some extra points by sharing with him the Irish toast that the doctor taught me earlier. Read it for me. Slaunch it, seal father, it's Boston Eden. It seems to be a pretty popular one, but he says he's got one that's even better. Uh, children, you better leave the room for this one. Slides and rudder, but more. I just bossed in. Oh, I love that one. Yeah, good. You don't have a notion what I just I said. I have no idea what you just said. I said uh, uh, slides and rudder, the, the, the health of the salmon. Okay. But more, a large penis. I just bossed in. The death in Ireland. Wow. Yes. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Slancha Vedon, Bodmore as Boss and Aaron. Now your turn. <laughs> Congratulations. Now, if you ever go drinking in Ireland, say that out loud, and you'll either be the coolest tourist in the room or someone might slap you. <laughs> Speaking of getting slapped, coming up, the ultimate showdown. Irish whiskey versus Scotch whiskey. Them spitting words around here. Plus, why whiskey makes a cup of coffee in these parts a real zinger. Ah. <laughs> okay, so I'm in a rural bar in Ireland on a quest to better understand Irish drinking customs when I stumble upon this guy. He lives in the area, but he's done some traveling and he's about to break it down for me in simple terms. His perspective on the culture of Irish drinking as compared to other places he's traveled. An American drinking culture was completely different to an Irish one. Right? Well, I mean... Uh, indeed, an, an English one was completely different to an yeah. Irish one. And the ones that tended to be quite similar to the Irish tended to be like the Germans. Mm -hmm. Because the Germans tend to get very good humoured when they drink. Yeah. And um, the British tend to get a little too serious for their own good. Okay. Um, and the Americans, excuse me for this, but Please. they will tell you everything about them. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> they like I think, to talk. I think, I think your phrase is too much information. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know, there's an expected. I don't do that, though. Uh, clearly. Um, there's a, there's a... Whatever the culture, we both agree. A few drinks can be a good thing now and then. And in Ireland, a really good thing is Irish whiskey. It was two large gems. Oh, good heavens. In fact, the word whiskey evolved from the Irish word whiskey, meaning water. A popular phrase in Scotland is that the Irish invented whiskey, but the Scotch perfected it. And that just pisses off the Irish to no end. Time for an Irish whiskey versus Scotch showdown. 
The barley used to make Irish whiskey is roasted in ovens, giving it a mild flavor. Scotch barley is roasted over peat-driven smoke, giving it a more earthy flavor. Irish whiskey is distilled three times, making it very smooth. Scotch is distilled twice, giving it a slightly harder edge. Irish whiskey is spelled like this. With Scotch, they spell it like that. So whose whiskey reigns supreme? Well, I'm not about to settle that age-old debate in one day. But I can say that while here, I've learned to appreciate the smooth nature of Irish whiskey. It's a social lubricant, and it lets people sort of relax and let down their... You know, what's wrong with being happy? <laughs> we'll start that. We start the movement. We're going we're gonna to start the Be Happy movement. The whiskey's taking effect. That was, that was <laughs> him. That was the whiskey talking. What are you talking about? That was... He didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Quit it. You know, go away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I'm definitely happy, mainly because I've gotten to the essence of what it means to drink in Ireland. Yes, Guinness is the most popular beer here, and yes, whiskey is a serious matter, but that's where the seriousness stops and good cheer kicks in. Because in the end, it's all about happiness when it comes to tossing a back in Ireland. And I've tossed back my share. I'm definitely not looking forward to tomorrow morning. <laughs> oh, wow, it's so good to see you guys. I have a hangover. And to make it worse, look, I have a, um, a guy jackhammering. <laughs> Here. The jackhammers are doing nothing for my recovery. I need some help. So I'm off to a local cafe for, you guessed it, Irish coffee. So how are you today? I have a hangover. You have a hangover? Yeah. I have the thing just for a hangover. You have a cure? I do. Irish coffee. It is the only job. Irish coffee has yeah. whiskey in it. Mm. You, the cure for a hangover is just to get re-drunk? Yeah. Would you like some? Sure. Would you like to try it? Yeah, let's do it. OK, time for Irish barista school with a hangover. OK. First, okay. heat the glass with hot water. I splashed it on my hand and it's... Don't burn yourself. And then dump it? Dump it. OK. Next comes the coffee. By the way, in Ireland, they're not coffee snobs. Oh, uh, this is... What, now, what is this? This is coffee. Is it fresh ground? Uh, this is just instant coffee. Now More like instant buzz, because after a wee dash of sugar, and a little hot water. Ah, damn it. It's time okay. for the main ingredient, Irish whiskey. Let's just, let's just eyeball it. Eyeball. That's good. Yeah, normally we wouldn't put that much in. Oh, it. really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, this one. Next, cream poured over the back of the spoon. Okay. Spoon on that, that cream. looks like vomit a little bit, or like baby poo. No, no, don't think of it as baby poop. Because it looks like baby poop. Now, you're not supposed to mix it. OK. You're supposed to get... I feel like you're yelling at me right now no. or something. <laughs> you're not, though, right? The taste is you want to get the whiskey through the cold cream. <laughs> oh, wow. My hangover's gone. It's amazing. I'm going to throw up. OK, so it was a rough morning. Who cares? It's not every day you get to experience two widely international drinks and the way they're meant to be consumed by the people who invented them. Oh, that is warm. I learned some cool toasts. Slauncher. 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 Slauncher, yeah, there we go. I learned that in some parts of Ireland, a black and tan is, well, brown. Oh, really? Yeah. I also got a really cool double old fashion. To drink more. But most important, I got to the essence of what drinking in Ireland is all about. Wow. <laughs> Good health. Yeah. Long life. Yeah. The may you die in Ireland. <laughs> Happy is definitely the right word for the people who I've encountered. Ah. <laughs> and now that I've experienced the drink, I gotta go. 
I think I see a pot of gold over there. <laughs> oh, let's go. I, have, I don't usually get the giggles. You are funny. Okay. Right. <laughs> We all have to learn Irish. Ooh, tell me how to say that. What was that? What does that mean? Listen, we all have to learn Irish. That is. How, what is that? He <laughs> doesn't know English. Where are you from? New York. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I know. Yeah. All right.